Hello, welcome to our Wednesday devotional. I'm so thankful you've chosen to spend these few minutes with me and let me share with you a thought or two from God's Word. I've uh, been reading recently the fascinating stories in the Old Testament and I've come to again the story of the building of Solomon's temple. You remember the story how that King David had wanted to build a temple for God but God had said, no, you're not going to build it because you've been a man of war. And David had. Had been a man of violence. And a lot of uh, things had taken place under his leadership. So he began to put things together. And God said, I'll let your son Solomon build me that temple. Well, the temple was to be built because uh, David wanted God to be honored with something more than the tabernacle. The tabernacle had been temporary, and they would put it up as they moved from place to place. Now they had established a land, established a place, a city, Jerusalem, uh, that would be the king's city. So he wanted to build this great temple. Now, when you read about the temple, it's difficult to imagine how beautiful it really was. Uh, we're talking about gold uh, items and gold-plated items, silver, uh, as if it were just any kind of building material. But God was being honored in all these um, exquisite, exquisite things that were being built and designed. King Solomon wisely reached out to another king, King Huram, of, king of Tyre, and he found a man who was very skillful in making furniture and designing these sorts of things. In fact, here's how the king of Tyre introduced him to Solomon. It's found in Second Chronicles chapter 2. I'm reading verses 13 and 14. The king of Tyre said, Now I have sent a cunning man, endued with understanding, of Huram my fathers, the son of a woman, the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre, skillful to work in gold, in silver, in brass, in iron, in stone, in timber, in purple, in blue, in fine linen. This guy was skilled in almost everything. Also to grave any manner of graving, and to find out every device which shall be put to him with thy cunning men, and with the cunning men of my lord David thy father. He was sending a skilled worker, a man who excelled everyone else in their country, to help Solomon design the furniture, and build those things that would be in the temple and part of the temple. As I read this, I saw several things, and I want to point those out and make applications to us and our church even today. First of all, he was called cunning. Cunning sounds like something that might be a little devious, but the king said, I've sent a cunning man. Literally, he was an intelligent man, and uh, the definition is artful or talented. We know uh, not everyone has the same talents and the same abilities. Just last Sunday night, I was very thrilled to listen to all the musicians who sang or played their instruments in our evening service. And we had a good number of people there to enjoy that wonderful time. But not everyone has that kind of talents. But uh, we were also able to enjoy that because we had people working in a nursery who could provide care for infants and babies so their parents could enjoy it. We were able to enjoy the service because our sound men were active, involved in providing all the background music and the things they needed to amplify the people so we could hear them. All these things are part of being cunning or skillful or talented. The king also said of this man, he had understanding. In fact, he says he was endued with understanding. This means he was able to solve problems. He had wisdom that others didn't have. He was able to figure out some of the things and deal with them that others wouldn't be able to deal with. And that's what it's like in a church or even a family. I think it's interesting to realize that even though King Solomon was the wisest man alive at that time, the wisest man endued by God with wisdom, yet he needed this kind of helper 
one that could solve problems that perhaps he could not solve himself. He was a man of understanding. I'm thankful that we have people like that. I can't solve every problem, and I certainly need people around me who can help me. The next thing I see is that his father had trained him. He had apparently come from a family who had done this kind of work, and we're told that his family was very skillful. His father was very skillful. Many of us were trained as children or as young adults in various uh, areas of um, work or areas of skill, and we learn from those early experience, experiences. As a church, we need to be careful that we also train new Christians, young Christians, not just young people, but young Christians in the skills and abilities that we are entrusted with as Christians. We need to reach out to others. We need to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we as older Christians, mature Christians, need to mentor and train those coming behind us. And then I see one more thought, just enough to help us this week in our living, and that's this. This skilled man was to work with King Solomon's skilled men. The king who was sending him to work for Solomon said, he's to work with thy cunning men. No matter how talented we are or how gifted we are, we need others to work with us. We cannot do God's work alone. As a pastor, I probably relearn that lesson almost every week. I'm faced with things or challenges that I don't really have an answer for, and I can reach out to others, some of you in fact, and get help in those areas. Many of our members are doing things and able to accomplish things that I simply could not do by myself. I'm looking forward, for instance, to our Vacation Bible School coming up August 1 through 4. There are to be classes, there's to be singing, there are to be skits, uh, there's to be uh, puppets and activities, all sorts of things that are fun for children, but it'll take a team to accomplish this. One of our kindergarten teachers once recently asked me, why don't you teach kindergarten for a, one time? I said, I can't do it. It's more than I can handle. I'm so thankful for a team of workers that helps and ministers in our church. We're not building a temple, but we want to be used of God to build His church here in Milford. I'm glad to have you as my helper. Have a great day.